Hi, it's Terry Diviak, and this is the third installment of the, uh, <laughs> I can't believe today, this is crazy. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hi, it's Terry, Terry Diviak. I think that's my name. Oh boy, I don't even know what's going on today. It's been kind of a crazy day. Trying to get this uh, video all set up and, and put together. I'm uh, based in Seattle, uh, Washington area, um, actually in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, today I'm in Stanwood. I'm actually in an uh, old um, uh, storage area uh, where my mom lives. My mom uh, has a, a farm up here, so it's, it's kind of fun. But uh, before I started shooting this portion, uh, well, I had a, some people shooting guns uh, very close by. Dogs are barking, but it's still kind of fun. kind of makes it a really interesting ambiance. So if you haven't checked out the first two installments of my uh, this, uh, stories behind the, the photos, you might want to do that first. Uh, they're linked right down here. And then um, maybe come to this third and final installment from my trip to Thailand. So as we continued up to the Chiang Rai area, and I think I've got a cat right here too. What's going on? <laughs> Boy. Oh, this is going to be fun. Anyway, so... Um, uh, we, we started moving up towards the Chiang Rai area, and we stopped at this little village, and I have to, uh, I got to put my glasses on to read this. We were at uh, Mai Yao, um, and we, it's a, like a little uh, uh, Karan, Karan, or Karen, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, um, maybe someone can help me out on the exact pronunciation, but it was a small village, and, uh, you know, we just got up there, we just started wandering around, and there was these uh, ladies that were, they had dried corn everywhere, and they were preparing that, and there was one lady kind of sitting way back in the corner, and uh, you can see right here on the video, and, uh, I don't know, maybe she was just tired and just having a tough day, and uh, so I just kind of framed that photo just the way I want it, and here's the shot I got of her, and I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Maybe she was just trying to avoid me, trying to avoid the camera, I'm not sure. So anyway, um, we then went to this small market, and the small market, uh, you know, the gentleman, the shopkeeper, he was selling uh, the traditional hats uh, with like the, the silver, maybe they're made out of aluminum or tin, uh, like, uh, I don't know if you want to call them buttons or whatever they were, but he also had this instrument, it was called a lalai. And you can see here he is uh, showing us how to play it. And it just made a, a really interesting sound. And I thought, you know what, I've got to buy this. So I actually bought that particular one for my son. But here's the, the series of photos I took of that gentleman while he was doing that. And he's just very photogenic. And it was just kind of fun to, to get these images as well. We then walked uh, further around the village. You know, there's dogs, and they all came up to us. And but there was this little boy sitting on a, I guess, on the porch. And uh, I don't know for some reason he just caught it in our eye. He had this great smile. And so Teresa, um, you know, asked him to kind of come forward, and she walked up to him and she gave him, I think, one or two coins. And he was so happy. And it was really fun to kind of get his expressions. And these are the photos of, uh, that you're seeing right now. And and it's just kind of fun to, you know, really interact with with people like that. Also, we were wandering around, and there was a lady that she was washing uh, some clothes in, like a, I guess, like a plastic tub, and she had a, a a pipe in her mouth, which I thought was interesting, and I was able to get just one photo of her with a pipe. But we went over and introduced ourselves, or you know, at least had Tony, our interpreter, introduce ourselves, and she was making these really cool, cool bracelets. And here's some photos here of the ones she was making. Um, and so we were able to get, you know, just a few photos of them as well. And, you know, again, whenever you travel, I think it's really important that you interact with people. You, uh, you know, it, it's one way to kind of learn more about the culture. Uh, sometimes I think, especially Americans, we're really afraid to kind of step out of our, our comfort zone a little bit. And I find that when you do, it's just going to make such a difference in, in your experience. And those experiences are even, like for me, memories that I still remember today. And, you know, I'm very fond of those memories. So I highly encourage you to do that as well. So after we left this little village, we then went to a Wat, and I've, I've got it written down here. I need to put on my glasses. And well, actually, let me back up because I, I really want to tell a story about this. So for the life of me, I couldn't remember where we were at. Were we in Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai? Um, 
I just couldn't remember. And uh, the one thing that I always recommend to people, uh, especially when I'm out traveling with them, I said, you always want to take pictures of signs wherever you go, because that way you can remember where you've been. But I couldn't find a sign in any of my photos. And so it's like, I, and I didn't have a name, the name of the Watt that we went to. But I, as I started started looking closer into my images, I found one photo. There's looks like there's some people working in like a little area, and there was a sign. And but it was in Thai. It wasn't in English. So it's like, oh man, what am I gonna do? So I found a really good trick that you're gonna love. Um, I just found this by accident. So what I did was I took that photo, and I uploaded it to Google Images. And what I wanted to do is see, okay, was there a photo similar to this that might tell me exactly where it was? In Google, absolutely not. There wasn't, there wasn't, I couldn't even find a, that, a photo that was even similar to that. It's like, oh man, so what am I gonna do? So I had heard about this website called Yandex. It's a Russian website and they have the ability to do that too. So you upload a photo, you can do a, you know, a search to, to find photos um, that match that as well. But I saw an option, and you'll see it here on this video that I'm sharing with you, you can actually translate. So I uploaded that photo and I translated the photo. I then copied everything from that translation into uh, translate.google.com. And as soon as I was uh, put in there, it came up. It was, I was so excited. And I'm gonna read this, uh, the name of the Watt here. It was called Watt Fra uh, KH, uh, OA Mahared, uh, and I'm gonna put on the screen for you because you know it's like I can't pronounce this stuff. And I discovered that it was in Chiang Rai, it was r really nice, but it was one of the most uh, probably one of the most memorable times that we had, at least up in that area. I mean, there's a lot of memorable things on the trip, obviously, I've shared those with you, and um. So we were invited into the Watt and they were, uh, there were some ladies that were in there, they were putting flowers together and food and they had incense and things like that. And they invited us to pray. So here's a little bit of the video of us as we were praying in this Buddhist temple. So eventually as time went on, we um, then went outside. So as you can see in this video, there's a lot of people lined up. So first off, you have men, and then you have the women. And there was probably, I don't know, maybe 80 people in line, and everyone was bearing gifts. And my recollection, and I may be wrong on this, but my recollection was that Tony said that this happens like once a month, maybe at a full moon or moon, new moon, I, I don't remember. And someone maybe will correct me in the comments here. So anyway, um, uh, the monks just slowly went down and they were uh, given food and uh, again my recollection was and keep in mind this is back in 2002 so you know I'm getting a little older my memory's not quite as, as good as it used to be but uh, you know they, they did this once a month you know this is pretty much all the food they, they have to survive for the full month and for me I just was so struck by the sense of community they take care of each other and everyone was just so friendly happy um, and you know they they refer to Thailand is a land of smiles and it definitely is and it's just such a great country to go to so for me that was really quite interesting to, to see that and, and experience in that you know that firsthand so one of the photos I uh, got you know as as things you know kind of progressed and everyone was done there was a monk that was kind of like a lone monk that just started walking up a road and this is the photo you see right here and that's kind of one of my I guess probably my most memorable photo from that particular time but you know I'm always looking for those unique shots and uh, there was a sense of solitude with him and you know that's kind of how monks are I assume I mean I've never been a monk so I don't know for certain but um, you know, and I would assume that there's probably a sense of gratitude as well for, you know, him receiving uh, that food from from the community. We then uh, headed up north, a little bit further, not too far away, but we went to the Mai Sai district, and so this is on the border of you have Myanmar on one side, you have Laos on the other side, and then you have Thailand. It's kind of like that golden triangle. And uh, we went to this uh, another Wat, and there was this big scorpion. You know, here's a picture of it right here, a uh, big scorpion um, statue. But also in that same Wat, there was a sign that said, 
uh, I think I'll put it up here. I think cause I don't have it right here in front of me, but it said uh, women not allowed or no women allowed. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting. You can never get away with that here in the United States. But uh, anyway, that was uh, quite an interesting sign to see. But during that time, so there's a lot of shops there. You know, it's right on the border there, so there's probably a lot of people that come from the different countries. And you have to keep in mind too, back then, this is before Myanmar or Burma, uh, as you know, it's been called as well, uh, actually opened up. Uh, they weren't weren't really open, and so there's a picture of me right uh, right there by the border. I've looked online since then, and it looks like the border is fairly open now compared to what it was uh, way back then. So then there was. Uh, some other photo opportunities for me. Uh, there were some young beggars. Uh, I hate to use that term, but they were they were asking us for money. And there was a, a little boy, maybe six or seven years old, and he had his brother on the back of him, and he was just you know asking for money. And and of course we gave him. Uh, I don't think we gave him money, but we gave him a, a few th things of um, so a little bit of food that we had just to kind of help them out. Um, so anyway, that was that was kind of a fun thing as well to to help them put a little smile on their face. Even though the photos that you see right now, they're not really smiling. But uh, towards the end of, the, of that that little visit, they were indeed smiling as well. Uh, just a couple of sh photos from that whole trip. So kind of combining a few photos from you know episodes one, two, and three. Uh, we went to an area, and I think this is, might have been Lo Puri, where there's a, um, a monkey temple um, uh, where the monkeys run wild. And not too far from there, there was a lady that was asking for money as well. You know, it was fairly impoverished in that area. And uh, she had a, a little girl, a boy, I'm not quite sure what the male or female, but I got one of uh, my favorite shots there as well. And here's that photo. And there's a little interaction video as well, you can see. Uh, but not only that, uh, Brandon, he uh, he was a good sport. He uh, was allowing the monkeys to jump up onto his shoulders, onto his head. And you can see this photo here that I, I was able to get as well. And that's quite interesting. I had one monkey that jumped up on me from behind. And I wasn't expecting it. And it really scared scared me. And I batted the thing away. And then he just like hissed at me and then bared his, his uh, teeth at me and, you know, I don't know what I was going to do, but uh, anyway, it was a kind of a fun, fun experience. So anyway, that's kind of the the wrapping up of the Thailand trip. I hope you enjoyed seeing this. Uh, again, this is back in 2002, so my memory's not always the best on a lot of the the facts of things. But uh, you know, it's really a, a catalyst for me to really start. Uh, getting in, involved with uh, travel photography and the next video episode number four what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you our trip to uh, Cambodia. It's probably going to be in, in two parts as well. Uh, there's some fun things that happened in Cambodia that I think you'll enjoy seeing. It's changed a lot uh, since then uh, so it'll, you know, you'll know actually see uh, Angkor Wat where we went where it wasn't that busy. I mean it, there's hardly anybody there but uh, based on the photos and videos I've seen today that's not the case. So, Anyway, I hope you're enjoying these. Uh, please subscribe, give me a like, hopefully a thumbs up. Uh, leave comments as well. I would really appreciate those comments. And I can't wait to share with you our trip to Cambodia. All right, take care.